All right, so here we are for a brand new episode of reacting to crash videos. As you guys know, in this series, we break down paramotor crashes and hope to learn lessons from them as to not repeat them in the future. I'm going to say this in this video because a lot of these crash videos have been getting demonetized by YouTube, which is super lame. So my disclaimer is that no one was injured in any of these videos and we're breaking down these videos for educational purposes. We're not encouraging people to crash or harm or injure themselves. We're actually doing the opposite, trying to make this sport a safer place. So YouTube, don't demonetize this, please. And while we're on the topic of YouTube demonetizing stuff, if you guys wanna help support the channel, check out Risky Biscuits Co. Tuckergot.com linked in the description. We've got hats, we've got sticker decals, we have t-shirts, we have hoodies. We even have key tags. We also have ozone wings if you're in the market for a brand new glider, reserves, harnesses, and today we actually just added stuff sacks. My opinion, the best stuff sack on the market, the ones that I use, check them out, tuckergot.com. So let's get into it. As always with the series, we have four videos and we're gonna go from the most mild up to the most catastrophic. So the first video was actually just submitted to me by my buddy Michael, who won one of our previous giveaways. This video is on TikTok, so I'm gonna reference my phone. Now we all know that ground starting a paramotor is not a good idea. Reason being, that thing goes to full throttle, thrust straight into you, people get their faces chopped up, fingers chopped off, it's really bad news. And in this video, we're gonna see exactly what can happen, but luckily this guy made it out, I think, unscathed. So it looks like this guy has his engine already started on the ground and he's fiddling with the throttle, trying to get it stowed or through the netting or something. The throttle cable gets sucked into the prop. Somehow that causes the engine to go to full throttle. And this guy heroically wrestles the engine and literally throws it to the side. Now this is an example of what I would hope I could manage to do in these situations, but I've never actually seen it done. You always think that you'd have the strength to overpower the engine or you'd jump out of the way or throw the engine like this guy did, but in a lot of cases that never happens and people just get chopped up by the propeller. I don't know, but that was pretty badass the recovery at least, not the fact that he was starting the engine on the ground. Lesson is don't do that kind of stuff because you probably won't be as lucky as this guy and you may end up getting chopped up by the propeller. Let's move on to video number two. This one was submitted to me anonymously by uh, Daffy Duck himself. The backstory to this one is dude man's just flying around in the desert having a good time. He's following a road and he doesn't realize there's a power line hazard straight ahead of him. God damn it. Put right into the power line. In this situation, the pilot was super fortunate again. Basically, he said that he saw the power lines at the last possible moment. There wasn't much he could do aside from trying to turn. Obviously, didn't work out. When he struck the power lines, he said his A-lines, the ones on the front of his glider, contacted and they were shredded mildly. Somehow, the wing like wrapped around the power lines and almost lowered him down onto his back. So he turtled onto the motor, broke his propeller, bent his frame, he had to replace the A-lines on the glider, fix up his paramotor, but overall he was not injured. He said he fixed up the paramotor and he was back in the air pretty quickly. Fortunately, he said it didn't scare him out of the sport. It actually just helped him progress as a pilot to realize those dangers of power line hazards and encourage him to fly a little safer. So video number three is from a man, Josh, who emailed this footage over to me. He said he was training in Borno, Spain, he said it was gonna be his first paramotor flight and it didn't go exactly as planned. Okay, all good. Okay. All good, you ready? Radio check. Stay prop. Okay, okay. Ah! 
What's happening? Uh, no, 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 don't pull it. Okay, okay. okay. My... Get him uh... All right, calm down, calm down. It's okay. okay. Relax, okay. relax. It's you're okay. okay. Everything's okay. intact. Okay. Relax. Oh, f it's okay. Breathe, breathe. Don't worry. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, Josh yeah. look at me. It's okay. It's over. It's okay. It hurts. Oh, no, it hurts. It hurts. Okay. Essentially what Josh described here was, it was his first takeoff, so obviously nerves are really high. And we all know when you're learning to fly a paramotor, a lot of people have a tendency to either jump into their seat or sit before they're actually flying. You start to feel the lift of the glider pull the weight of the motor off of your back, you think it's ready to fly, and your instinct is to jump or sit into the harness. But really, we try to train it into our minds to keep running. Whatever you do, don't sit, don't jump, keep running until you're at least 50 feet in the sky. Obviously for Josh, the instinct to jump or sit took over. He flew momentarily, but then came back down and he did the right thing by attempting to run again. But when he tried to run, he said his knee twisted, something popped and it shocked him so much because of the pain. He didn't know how bad his knee injury was. So instinctually, he reached down with his left arm with the brake still in his hand, which obviously put a huge input into the glider. He said there was a moment of indecision in his mind of, should I try to get off the ground and keep flying and then come in and land with a busted up knee? Or should he just abort this takeoff altogether? And that was more so the way his mind went was abort the takeoff. He came down pretty hard and still he was in shock thinking his knee was blown out, torn, broken, something. But lucky for him, after a few minutes and after some of the instructors seemed to calm him down a little bit, the injury wasn't actually that bad. He stood up and was able to walk away. Oh, don't worry, everything's don't, don't okay. Don't try to move it, just relax, just breathe, breathe, breathe. Oh. Don't worry, everything's oh. okay. It's Josh, like, uh, tell me where it hurts. My knee down to my ankle on the outside, like it's like my knee twisted. Yeah, okay, wait. It's getting a little bit better. Okay. Oh jeez. I think a lot of this is shock, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that away. Okay. All right, it's not as bad as I thought. Can we put your leg forward? I don't know. Follow. Oh, okay, I'm it's not as bad as I thought. I got really you. scared. All right, let's try and stand you up. Give me your hand. Yeah. Can I go like this? Okay. Ready? Three, two, one. On the right leg. Oh. Stand up. Oh, that scared the shit. Take, pad off. Take your knee pad off. Okay. I think he said, it ended up being a sprained ankle and sprained knee. So luckily nothing too major. It did put a dampener on his training, but he's stoked to fly again. All right, on to video number four. Now this one just happened recently. It's been making its rounds on the internet. There's not a whole lot of information, but this one is legitimately pretty brutal. I'll say this as just like a general statement. In the paramotor world, every so often, there's a couple crashes that happen within a few week time period that make the whole community community just kind of scratch their head and be like, you know, we got to reevaluate and be safer. And I think right now is one of those moments. There were just two big crashes out at uh, Glamis Sand Dunes, and then this one just happened, and they all resulted in some pretty bad, potentially like life-altering injuries. So as a general thing, I just want to say to every paramotor pilot that may be watching this, take a minute to just evaluate where you are. Are the risks you're taking worth the rewards? Are you becoming complacent? Is there more you can do to become a safer pilot? It sucks to see people crash and get injured, but that's kind of the point of these videos to try to evaluate and be safer overall as pilots. So onto this video. This pilot's taking off at a beach He's flying a free ride, which is the same wing I fly. The pilot is obviously pretty experienced. He's throwing this glider around in a similar fashion as I do quite often, doing some big slalom turns on the beach and then tragedy strikes. So judging by this footage, there's a few things that I would take from it. First off, you're at the beach. The weather's probably great. There's probably a ton of people kind of watching you. And it does 
kind of get to some people and they want to try to show off. I'm not sure how much of a factor that was in this video, but I've been there. You're trying to impress some people and look super cool on the beach in your paramotor. Potentially that could have contributed to this situation. The next thing I notice is as he's doing these big slalom turns, right before he impacts the ground, you hear his motor either bog or cut off. Now it's almost impossible for me to say just judging by this footage, but it's possible that the engine bogged and bogged at the wrong moment and that caused him to not be able to pull out of the maneuver. I think that's kind of unlikely. I feel like the pilot probably just misjudged. Maybe he even let off the throttle himself. I'm not sure. I can't really tell from the footage. Regardless, I know that this pilot got banged up pretty good. He had a decent amount of injuries that are probably going to be life changing. I wish him the absolute best in recovering. I hope that if he wants to, he gets to fly again someday. And I hope that we can all take this as a lesson. For me, Seeing this footage, that's the kind of stuff I do all the time. It's a ton of fun, some of my favorite types of flying, and it's super important to remember and respect how quickly things can happen. One slight misjudgment and you can plow right into the ground and be seriously, seriously injured or killed. So that's all four videos I have for you guys today. I hope you found them educational. I appreciate all the pilots that have submitted stuff and share this footage for all of us to learn from. I wish our last pilot a speedy recovery. And while this video goes live, I personally will probably be out in Las Vegas jumping out of uh, unmanned hot air balloons. After that, I'm gonna be doing more base jumping, maybe do a couple paramotor flights. It's gonna be a week long trip, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the content that's coming up soon. It's gonna be awesome. Otherwise, check out Risky Biscuits Co. linked in the description. Hit me up if you need an ozone wing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, fly safe, have fun, peace. Zzz.